Jews are a textual people. After our temple was destroyed, there isn't a central temple. Instead, you have a kind of portable temple, and that is the Jewish library. Torah, Mishnah, Talmud, works of Midrash. These texts are the source of Jewish peoplehood, of Jewish culture, of Jewish law, of Jewish values. What you have is this just flowering and flowering and flowering of human investment in the divine word. It's just layer upon layer upon layer of commentary and conversation. The ability to wrestle with them in every generation, it's the essence of who we are as a people. I personally think it's one of the jewels of human culture that we now have and we have to bring on to the future. We're now living in a digital world and we are the generation that has been charged with shepherding these texts, this ancient tradition, into a new digital era. Brett and I met when we were 17 years old on a trip to Israel. He went off to Google, I went off to become a journalist, and we reconnected around a shared frustration about the state of Jewish texts online. At that time, literally the first result when you searched for Talmud on Google was an anti-Semitic website. We saw an opportunity to not just put all of these texts online, but to interconnect them with parallel translations and to do it in the public domain in a way that would be open and accessible and could be the infrastructure for everything that comes next with these texts in the digital era. My initial response to Josh and Brett's proposal was, you have got to be kidding me. Everybody thought that it was too big of a project, there was too much involved, that it just couldn't be taken on in a realistic way. And Brett said, well, I used to work at Google, and we've kind of put everything online, so this is a kind of a small job, the way I think about it. That was it. We were convinced. What started with just Josh and Brett has now turned into a team with close to 20 full-time employees in eight cities all over the world. We have people working on getting the text. We have engineers who are building content. Our goal is to make something that's powerful, but also simple and intuitive and beautiful. Every day, day in, day out, we're trying to build the single greatest experience for exploring Jewish text that's ever existed. Anything you find that you're interested in, you can touch a piece of text to open up a panel that shows you commentaries, connections, other related texts. You can connect the texts to each other in the way that they have always been connected, but that we've never been able to see. So rather than take books off of the shelf, you can just click with your finger on the different text. We're also building a space where people today can create and comment and exchange ideas with one another. That's our source sheets library. We currently have over 50,000 source sheets that educators and students around the world have created on Safari. And these sheets include not just primary sources, but also users' comments, images, videos, new questions that come up. To be able to make your own source sheet so quickly, so easily, and to play with it just in the way that you would make a playlist on iTunes, I think there's a tremendous sense of empowerment. When I make a source sheet, it's reflective of the thoughts that have come to me and the line that I see through a mass of information. A piece of paper has edges. It's bounded. When I give my students a link, they can take it and explore. They can find the fullness of the Torah and truly make what is information into ideas my source sheet becomes the beginning of their learning, not its end. Everything we do with Safari is ultimately about thinking through how this is gonna be used by educators, by teachers, by students. So we've put a real emphasis on exploring where the possibilities for Safari in the classroom are. One thing we've seen is how exciting it is for students to be able to have this vast corpus of text at their fingertips. We wanna create not just broader learning experiences, but the opportunity for deeper learning experiences. So we have currently almost 100 million words of text in the Safari library. 60,000 people a month are studying Jewish texts using Safari. Safari is allowing people to access texts that they never would have thought were accessible to them before. Either because the rooms where those texts are kept are not rooms that they feel comfortable in, or simply because the rooms that they have access to don't have those texts. Safari has a sense that these texts are the collective property of the Jewish people. 
they are everybody's, and that is a beautiful idea and really a beautiful value. You, as the user, are part of the Jewish story. You are part of the telling of the story and the writing of the story. It feels to me exactly the way that we want 21st century people engaging with Jewish text. This is a transformational moment in Jewish history. These texts you can get digitized once if it's done right. To know that this work is going to matter, not just 10 years from now, but 100 years from now, and hopefully 1,000 years from now. That's an exciting thing to be a part of.